Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be going back to the infamous Tabby star, also known as WTF star, also known as KAC 8462852 and we're going to be talking about what's very likely happening there and why we now are almost 100% certain it's definitely not the alien structure or mega structure as some people have implied. Anyway, let's talk about the star and the discovery and welcome to What The Math. Now you might be wondering why did I actually start with a simulation of exploding Earth very very close to our moon. And it's actually to show you what actually happens in certain situations when planets collide and when the planets actually do kind of explode. There's a tremendous amount of fragments that's been generated here and a lot of this stuff actually will create a huge debris field. There will be a lot and a lot a lot a lot of dust. When something collides with something else and you can kind of see it's it's actually hard to see but there it is. There's a tremendous amount of dust. So where, we, where am I going with this? Well this is actually what a recent uh, study and a recent confirmation has basically discovered. We realized that it's very likely this kind of stuff that's causing the sudden dims of the Tabby star. Now, if you don't know the story, uh, back in September of 2015, the citizen scientists, basically a variety of um, amateur astronomers that were studying the data from various stars, discovered that there was a star out there. Unfortunately, we don't really have it in, uh, in this simulation, but we're going to create it from scratch. Um, known um, as KSC 8462852, also known as the uh, WTF star, Tabby star or Boyajani star, after the uh, main uh, researcher of the study that had something weird going on around it. Now, this star is actually very similar to one of our neighbors, a neighbor by the name of Procyon A. I'm gonna try to find it here, and we're going to place it right in the middle just to kind of simulate all of this. So we're going to rename this as Tabby star and also change some of the parameters, specifically here, the mass. It's a little bit less massive than Procyon A uh, at 1.43 masses of the sun. So that's about 43% as massive as our own sun. It's also a little bit brighter, maybe about five times brighter than our sun, and is a little bit bigger in size as well. So if you were to compare this to our sun, it's maybe about 1.58 um, radii of the sun, making it um, about 500 kilograms per cubic meter in density. So that's Tabby Star. It's also hotter, close to about 7,000 degrees Kelvin, and overall this is known as a um, an F-type star. So our star is known as a G-type, this is an F-type. But um, we know these stars, and we know there are actually planets around them, and we actually are very familiar with this type because we have so many to study nearby. And so for the longest time we actually thought that, well, okay, it really can't be some sort of an alien megastructure, like some uh, people suggested, specifically the media mostly, uh, because it just doesn't really make logical sense, and because um, even though we might believe in the existence of intelligent extraterrestrial life out there, it probably wouldn't be found in such an unusual way. But this was, uh, or this this is how actually the star became famous, because it was so unexplainable why those dips happen that uh, we, as a community, maybe started imagining that it could be some sort of an alien megastructure that created these dips in brightness. And um, as you may have read about the star or maybe heard from the previous videos, um, it actually lost about 20% luminosity in the last 100 years and dipped as low as 11% um, in brightness over a period of something like a week. So there was something strange going on here. But what we didn't really consider is what kind of brightness are we talking about? And this is actually what the recent study discovered. And this was by the principal investigator, uh, Tabitha Bayojian, so it kind of is her own uh, perspective on this. They, st they started studying the kind of the uh, light coming off the star and compared various studies and various observations and realized that the object passing in front of the star was actually not opaque. In other words, it wasn't just covering the star like this. It was um, somewhat transparent and transparent in different um, uh, light frequencies. 
So this can be kind of taken off the list right away. So what do we know that might be kind of transparent in some frequencies, but not other frequencies? Well, nothing but space dust. In other words, tiny pieces of rocks and ices that are probably floating under a kind of unusual uh, inclination here and reappear once in a while, specifically what seems to be every 700 days. And on top of this, it's uh, probably the kind of materials you would discover in an asteroid belt or maybe even from a very large collision of two planetary objects. And due to this, we actually are seeing dips in different frequencies of light. So let's just kind of go through the summary of how we got to this conclusion. First of all, there was actually a relatively large um, fluctuation of uh, light luminosity in May of 2017. And um, as of six, 16th of September 2017, there were actually four uh, very, very big dims of light. So in, in a matter of about four to five months, four such dims occurred. The last one was actually the largest of the year meaning that these dims of light are not uh, predictable and on top of this they don't seem to be always the same. But after those uh, dips of light occur you also get the increase of luminosity so it kind of like goes up and down a lot and it doesn't seem to have any pattern but it does seem to actually reappear maybe around every 700 or so days. And even uh, most recently, when I'm actually making this video, specifically late December of 2017, uh, another major dip started being detected and it's sort of recovering some of the brightness and then dips below about maybe 2% of total brightness. And this seems to be repeating over and over and over again. And so several various telescopes were used um, to study these dips. And what we've discovered is that, well, it just seems to be definitely not a solid object. It seems to be various particles that are blocking the view, maybe with an inclination that looks something like this. And uh, there's a bit of a wobble going on in there. And so these dips actually increase and decrease in value depending on the period um, on when we're actually looking at it. And so uh, there are actually um, a few theories right now on what sort of a dust ring this is and what it actually came from. One of them being that this might be actually a very, very large Saturn-like gas giant that seems to have a very, very large um, ring field around it. And we actually know at least one such uh, planet and one such star that have these. And because it has an inclined orbit, we kind of get to see a variety of dips once in a while. Or it could be a kind of a circumstellar dust ring similar to our own asteroid field that you see right here that just has a bit of a wobble and is very likely not very even. So there are like dips in it. So there's maybe some pieces missing here, maybe some pieces missing there. And because of this inequality, once in a while um, you, we get a dip and then for some reason it actually goes back up in luminosity. This could have been caused by a nearby planet that disturbed the um, asteroid field and created these unusual uneven fields in it. And finally, this could also be a result of a planetary collision. Now, despite this sounding really, really cool as a potential explanation, unfortunately mathematics tells us that for such an event to occur, the um, probability and the luck has to be on our side. In other words, it is very, very, very unlikely that we actually detected an event in progress or an event that occurred in the last few thousands of years. So for a planet or collision to actually be the cause of this, despite the cool sounding uh, repercussions of this, it's kind of unlikely. This would definitely create a dust debris necessary for these dips and the, uh, the fact that there are different materials present could be explained that this is just um, the insides of the planet that are being redistributed across this star system is just once again statistically very improbable that we actually detected such an event. So it's more likely that this is either a result of planetary rings that you see kind of got destroyed completely in this particular simulation or an asteroid belt or even a cometary belt that has these unusual uneven regions that also seem to wobble once in a while. 
So that's the idea behind the Tabby Star. Definitely not aliens and definitely not anything unexplainable. But nevertheless, it's something that's really, really interesting for us to study because we might find more stars like it in the future. And most importantly, this particular study and this particular event created two amazing opportunities for scientists around the world. First of all, we actually got to use citizen scientists, basically just individuals out there, to help analyze and study the data and discover new unusual stars. But also, we actually got to finally combine data from various telescopes very effectively, thus allowing us to discover and to analyze the data that would be very difficult to do with just one telescope or telescopes from a single country. So here we have a combined forces of several telescopes, several science teams, and also citizen scientists around the world. All in all, Tabby Star definitely brought us all together, and hopefully in 2018, we'll find more stars like it, and we might be able to form a conclusion about what's actually happening around this beautiful, unusual, and mysterious star. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.